This video is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to the roof of the Peterson Automotive Museum. Uh, and actually right over there you can see is the skyline of LA. Awesome, but that's not why we're here. This is why we're here. The BMW Neue Casa X. There you can see how it's spelled right there. And yes, that's how it's pronounced. I asked my friend Andreas, our German friend who confirmed. Right, Andreas? Yeah, that is correct. Neue Klasse. Now back to you, Jordan. Anyways, this is why we're here, seeing the US debut of the actual BMW Neue Klasse X, which is the SUV, not to be confused with the Neue Klasse, like sedan thing they showed previously. This is not the first time it's been shown to the world. Uh, they had the actual debut over in Europe, but over in the US, here in LA, this is now the night where they're showing it off to everyone. <laughs> Curious what you guys all think, by the way, um, because notably BMW has been, I think, hit and miss recently with their design trends, but I'm actually very intrigued by this. Now, before this, we actually got to go see the BMW Design Works. Uh, we weren't able to film some things in there, but I was able to get some B-roll. I can kind of show you over the screen, but this was actually designed in assistance with some AI, which is interesting. Um, they didn't use AI as like a crazy buzzword. We didn't even know they were going to talk about that when we went to the design center, but really cool to see that. The design center is actually in um, Santa Monica, where we are staying while we're here. And yeah, it's one of three design centers. There's one in Munich, one in Shanghai, one in Santa Monica. They all work together. They all compete sometimes. The design centers where they do design work, uh, obviously on the exterior and the interior as well. And now that they've been using AI to kind of interpolate new design ideas, uh, it's pretty interesting. It's not really like blatantly replacing a person, which is I think is a lot of people's fear with AI. They actually are just using AI to generate imagery or like feel like texture and colors and then they feed it into AI what they want and then sometimes they'll use AI to decipher what the AI is showing and then they'll use that back into AI. It's this weird like reiterative process. They're using tools like Runway, Midjourney AI, Crea, which like actually creates uh, I guess digitalized pieces of imagery. It's really a fascinating. Also blending in with, of course, Photoshop and Illustrator, to more traditional tools. They're trying to have it as an additional piece of the palette for when they're actually coming up with these design ethos. Um, not sure what the design works was doing for the past 10 years of beaver teeth and all those things that um, people didn't necessarily love. The IX and also the XM were notably uh, polarizing, to say the least. I feel like the people who, the same amount of people who hate the Cybertruck hate those, which is a lot of people but I'm actually okay with the design ethos that they're taking right now. I'll overlay it on the screen, but Noya Classa is not actually a brand new, well, it is brand new, but it's not the first time they've used that terminology. Noya Classa also refers to the actual um, BMW introduced in the early 60s, I think 1961 was the first Noya Classa. Uh, and that's actually when they introduced these kind of uh, elements for the kidney grill, like the really thin, narrow ones, which I'm glad to see them tiny on here. Obviously this car doesn't need the cooling capabilities of a traditional grill, neither does this. Um, so with the SUV variants, it seems like they're doing the more upright thing and it's notably scaled down compared to the iX, which I think uh, makes a lot of people happy, including myself. On the sedans, they seem to be going a bit more thin and horizontal instead of uh, vertical. So maybe that's going to be a future design ethos. Just like the Neue Klasse back in the 60s, I think this will set the design trend for many years to come. And that's something I am putting my money on, is that the SUVs will look a bit more like this, the sedans will look a bit more like this. Sizing wise, this is actually a bit, um, you know, kind of close to an X5. Well, actually closer to an X3 size wise, but the interior feels like a bit more of an X5. So it's kind of a blend between the two. And because of the reconfiguration and the actual electrification first mindset, you know, this is not like the i4 and i5 that are kind of combustion cars also. 
This is ground up electrified and that's why they're able to have a bit more leeway with the interior being really nicely laid out. Clearly this is very conceptual, so I can't actually give you a ton of hardcore facts and figures, but here's some of the engineering things you nerds might like to know. 800 volt architecture will be the under, underpinnings of this. Now, what does that actually mean? Because with EV9, for example, 800 volt for them means, oh, it's the architecture. It's actually like 500 something volts. Whereas with Porsche and some that even go higher than 800 volt, it is kind of actually almost 800 volts. So not sure exactly what that means. And of course, we'll find out all those figures as we get closer to production. But this is going to be, I think at launch, probably dual motor, all wheel drive, of course, it's an SUV or SAV as BMW calls it, sport activity vehicle. Quick thought on that. I think maybe they made up that terminology because they didn't beat Lexus to the luxury SUV space. Lexus unveiled their luxury SUV in 1998, whereas BMW unveiled their X5 SAV in Detroit Auto Show 1999. So it's been 25 years of the X5, which by the way, was a product of the Design Works Center here in Santa Monica. It was not designed in Germany. It was designed here in BMW here, which is pretty cool. Beyond that, we will also see, um, yeah, battery sizes of 75 kilowatt hours, 90 and 105 kilowatt hours. So they have 15 in kilowatt hour increments. Um, charging and range should both be improved by 30%. And I think that's based on maybe current iX3. I'm not really sure. They keep saying these improvement figures, but I don't know exactly what they're improving on. Efficiency is also improved 25% and they're claiming 300 kilometers or 186 miles of range should be able to be charged in 10 minutes, which seems pretty promising for charging speeds. Of course, we'll do all the usual testing here out of spec whenever this car actually comes out. And by the way, if you're wondering, they're actually slating or aiming for the end of next year. So the end of 2025 which does feel like a ways away, but I should remind you that's still sooner than Rivian R2, which technically might be a competitor to this. Um, I'm curious to see how close to the design language they can make it, but I will say seeing this in person up front, this actually looks fairly close to what could come out. Like this is nearing release candidate, at least on the exterior. The interior is still a bit iffy, but it's still possible. I don't see many FMVSS red flags, as you would call it, with the interior. We don't actually know what the range will be yet, of course, but um, I'm hoping they go at least 300 miles because that seems to be what most people demand, more or less. They, they think they demand it. I don't think actually that many people need that much range, but I think to make it competitive it needs about that range, but also charging speed, I think, is even more important. Now, the batteries themselves, as of announced a couple days ago, are going to be able to be made by Rimats. We don't know everything about this partnership, but the battery cells themselves should be 4685 cells. So 46 diameter, 85 height instead of the 4680 that Tesla uses. But also I think 46120 will be another cell size that they offer. So definitely interesting, pretty tall battery cell. Um, so yeah, don't really know everything about how those will handle, what their cooling strategy will be, even what their motor strategy will be. But I mentioned this will be slated as dual motor, I think at launch, but the platform itself is future-proofed for quad motor. They do have the underpinnings allowed for that. So I think it is a bit of a software focused car. It's gonna have a lot of function with the software itself. We'll try to get inside here in a second, but that's a bit of the nerdy data, at least what we know in this very early, early stage. Um, I don't know the coefficient of drag yet, but of course we don't even know whether this will look exactly like this. Also the mirrors, as you can tell, are digital. Will they actually be that when it comes out? I don't know, but let's look at the design. So uh, please take a pause right now and let me know in the comments what you think of this design language because I actually really like it. I have not been a fan of the iX or even the i4. Honestly, this is my favorite electrified BMW since i3. Um, nothing else has really impressed me lately, either gas or electric, honestly. They're all a bit hit and miss, but honestly, I think this hits. I don't know if it's a combo of the color or what the situation is, but it really looks fantastic to me. Now, walking around the car a little bit, as you can see the grill right there in the front, that is very notable and that's very traditional BMW looking. Now I'm sure the phone will do weird things with the LEDs, but I'm sure that they actually all just look normal to me right now. The interesting thing with the grill, like I said, doesn't need the cooling aspects. So you have kind of a 3D effect and it's just lights. BMW has said they're actually going away from all chrome. And that's actually technically an efficiency or an eco-minded approach because chrome is a bit harder to manufacture. Of course, it's harder to clean. 
It's just not a sustainable material or finish, which, um, yeah, I'm fine with that. So these lighting elements actually look very 3D. Hopefully the screen is picking that up, but from my point of view, it's like extremely 3D looking. I would venture to guess there will be a bit more actual cooling elements below. Like see how that's kind of all blocked off and it's almost like this carbon effect that we've seen on some other cars. Now that might just be for looks right now. I don't know if it's actual carbon. Maybe they'll have a carbon version with like an M version of this car, but I am totally okay with the front, which I haven't been able to say for that many BMWs. There's a bit of a blade looking thing right here. I don't think that actually goes anywhere right now, but it's a cool design element. And yeah, this, this front lighting signature is awesome. Um, front LED lighting, the DRLs, that's really how a car company nowadays determines its fascia and how it actually looks. I mean, you can see it from at night, but also during the day, and it just shows you that's a BMW. Like you would go look at this for a half second and know immediately what it is. I actually also really love this logo. It's kind of just stamped into the hood rather than being like added on. So big fan of that. I hope that's actually production intent. There's also, as I mentioned, the mirrors, which curious what you guys think of the whole digital mirror thing. Of course, that's not currently legal in the US. Neither is all their fancy lighting that you know they'll get in Germany, but I really hope that that does come eventually. We're just so behind in the US with safety technology, including the uh, lighting, you know, the full, I don't know, what do you call it? Matrix lighting, I guess, and the side mirrors being digital. The rear mirror, <laughs> funny enough, looks super chrome right now. Uh, that's my friend Scotty filming inside. We're all just kind of taking turns. Um, wheels, these actually look pretty sweet. We actually have an i5 on loan right now, and that uh, is a pretty interesting design. I think it's unique. It is funny, these are Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. I highly doubt that's gonna be the actual tire this comes out with, and it's hilarious to me that they threw them on this car. Um, we actually have Pilot Sport 5 now out, but uh, maybe when they first designed this car, that's what they were using. It is also interesting to see the BMW Panoramic Vision displayed from the outside. I don't think that's actually what's going to happen on the car when it comes out. That's just telling us, you know, as in a marketing perspective, that there's actually a panoramic display inside the car on the dash, which we'll get to in a second. Coming around to the side, you can definitely see how large the greenhouse is. The actual belt line of the car is fairly low, which does also help with the center of gravity. Um, but also allows for the glass itself to be fairly large and that makes the inside feel extremely spacious and open. I think it's actually a nice effective strategy. And just like a lot of other cars, they do that thing at the bottom where they make it black to make the car look skinnier. That's just a very typical design element. And we can see the charging port out here on the passenger rear side. So yeah, not um, Tesla V3 supercharger happy, but honestly, I think the V4 post will fix that. So kind of like Rivian, I don't think it really matters. Everyone's picking apart the R2 for having the charging port right there, but by the time the R2 comes out in two years, uh, we might have a completely different landscape as far as charging infrastructure and architecture. These are the actual door handles, which feel very Mustang Mach-E, and I think they look pretty cool. I like that both doors use the same thing. Uh, it actually kind of annoys me that the Mach-E has two different door opening types, but that's, that's fine. And then, yeah, the back is a bit more polarizing for some people. I actually like it. Um, definitely some IX vibes for sure. The same kind of blade design down here that you saw at the front. And yeah, the diffuser looks pretty good to me. Have all this Neue Klasse X badging, which I'm sure is just marketing stuff. That's eventually where license plate will go. Um, yeah, this material back here, also very concepty. I'm sure that'll just be open space when the actual car comes out. And this is kind of a spoiler situation, not open from the top at all, like we see on some cars. So, you know, when this actually comes out, there'll probably be a rear wiper and stuff like that. I don't even know if this opens. Yeah, not currently opening. So uh, let me know what you guys think of the actual design of the BMW Vision Noia Class X. It's a mouthful, but it's awesomely, it's an eyeful. I love this thing. I didn't expect to, and I would actually drive this. And that's coming from someone who doesn't love SUVs or, CUVs or SAVs. The, arc, the, the, the marketing acronyms, it's getting ridiculous. Jumping in to the Neue Klasse X. And oh man, 
So it's not actually a four spoke steering wheel, it's a two spoke steering wheel. Well, I guess there's technically two spokes here and here. So four, I guess, but this is not touching. These are all haptic controls. Of course, they're not really doing anything right now, but that is the display up there, the panorama vision, something like that. I don't know what they call it, marketing terms, you know, but that looks awesome. And honestly, I wouldn't even need a heads up display, but I think they are also gonna have a 3D heads up display as well. And this is the screen, which looks super fantastic. And now the door is closed, super quiet. I mean, this is still concepty. Like, look at this. This is just orange and white. There's pillows in the back. They did go the length to put seat belts in, which is interesting. Um, these are the seat controls here, which, oh, they do actually function well. Not really. Okay, they just moved me forward and backwards, so they don't actually do anything. But this is like a nice touch material on the steering wheel. I don't know how to comment on all the actual, you know, fit and finish and materials because I don't think those will actually be final production. What will be closer to final production? Yeah, not this mirror either. I mentioned earlier that you're gonna have chrome removed, and this looks like all chrome, but again, that might be actually just concept. All of this might be concept, but I really do hope it's similar to this because this feels like insanely refreshing. I can't get over the actual missing mirrors. That's kind of wild, but looking at the display here, this is oh, just the way it like reacts to my finger. It's like doink, doink. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Home, I guess we're already home. Whoa, sliding down, super responsive. That's fantastic. I weirdly like the whole rec or uh, I don't know, weird parallelogram thing where it's like leaning towards the driver feels really nice. Dash cam doesn't do anything. I bet most of these don't actually do anything. It's probably just, um, yeah. But what I was talking about maybe earlier was that these actually are the widgets up on top of the screen there. So I guess on the left here, charging range remaining 600 kilometers and that's on 100% battery. That is, you know, they just, hard-coded that it's not actually a thing but i can control the actual widgets up here which is super cool so media is not up here let's replace that charging metric with media because charging metrics useless right now that's pretty sweet uh so yeah you can control all six of these widgets right here with whatever is up there that's pretty fun I'm trying to think of what else is actually in here there's not a ton that we can actually do with this pre software personal connect your feed you can upload your image to make your own kind of background here um, connect some sort of feed personal sound experience so this is the actual sound the car makes when you rev it free expressive is a bit more low tone agile is like ooh, it's almost like a minor key I'd probably do somewhere between Agile and expressive. I don't know. I'd probably also just mostly turn it off, but that's pretty interesting. And then ambient art. Oh, yes. So the ambient lighting all changed. That was kind of nice. Yeah, the ambient lighting is really nice. Uh, I mean, the whole thing's just super airy. I actually hope there's more ambient lighting maybe with the final car, but this is pretty, pretty cool. I'm a fan. Let me know what you guys think of this whole display situation and what is probably going to be the direction of uh, BMW's new iDrive system. Uh, but I'm a fan. I like how it looks. The UI, the UX, all seems very intuitive. This is, a, to me, a huge step above what is basically iDrive 8 point something. I forget what they're actually on right now, but yeah, this is pretty sweet. There's, yeah, again, very minimal things I can actually do here. Maybe these are personal pads, I'm not really sure. Um, but I don't know if I love the actual haptic everything on the steering wheel. It is glossy, but it's not glossy black. It's actually like a see-through method. I don't know if that's gonna be production either, but that's pretty interesting. As long as they function well and actually give you proper haptic feedback, I'm okay with that, but I just don't know. It is funny too that many people have said, oh, the steering wheel appears upside down. I think it's because we're not used to seeing a spoke on the top here. So when we do, we think, oh, it's upside down, but there's a spoke down here as well. It's just a different approach and I'm here for it. And check it out, there are actual stocks. So that's cool. We really need more stocks. Um, I wish people would stop removing them. It almost looks like there might be speakers down here, which is interesting, but I just don't want to focus too much on the things that will inevitably change. But the feel of the ambient lighting, you can even see it's like pulsing underneath the mesh there. So it feels like the car is alive. And yeah, feels pretty spacious. I'm gonna try to get in the back seat as well, but 
very, very open and airy, much more than you would see in like, say an X3, probably even more than an X5, if I'm being honest. Love the screen real estate. The IP is all at a good level. Everything feels nice in here. And I am inside sitting like I'm six feet tall and I have plenty of headroom. I mean, that's a perk of a glass roof as well. So we'll see the back seat as well. The back seat also has decent headroom, um, which is, I mean, kind of expected. It's like they wouldn't really build a concept with any bad headroom and I can definitely fit my six foot self. Um, there's also the weird like carpety thing that I mentioned behind the back seats. Again, it's just for concepts. Like that's how it looks to look best on photos, but it's not gonna be really that functional. The final vehicle will definitely have a more traditional rear trunk space, I believe. So powering the UI on the inside is of course an ECU, um, but there are actually four ECUs for this car. There's one, I think up front, which is focused on the actual powertrain. By the way, this is the E-Drive powertrain and it's sixth generation. Uh, then there's also another ECU that controls uh, well, yeah, powertrain and then one that controls the screen and then one that controls the ADAS systems, which I'm really excited to see how well those do because they've been pretty good, notoriously good. But there's also an ECU that controls the basic, almost like 12 volt type things like the wipers and probably the lights and stuff like that. So sustainability is also another good feature that they're thinking about. Of course, every brand is basically trying to think about that. It's good marketing speak, but BMW has said they are talking about the life cycle of this car as in the beginning but also the end the idea for it knowing a class of vehicles is that they will be easily recyclable there's a lot of single use materials as in like very simple like simplified so when the material is finished with its use like a plastic for example it can be melted down for the next iteration of whatever that is so thinking about a car as a life cycle not just oh we built the car oh no what happens in 354 500,000 miles when it's done on its 17th owner what will happen i don't know but they are thinking that direction with the school this will also be built at the i factory yeah they just put i in front of everything it's kind of ridiculous but the i factory which i think is in hungary um something like that i don't know <laughs> somewhere in europe uh which was actually a factory that is entirely running on fossil free fuels or at least that's the intention so these will be built whenever they are in the final production state and that's the idea making them sustainable and better for the environment so that's why they're focused so much on these sustainable looking materials and yes the future is bright winky face there's actually going to be six vehicles they're slating on this platform noia class is kind of a platform if you want to think of it that way design ethos, engineering ethos, whatever you want to call it. There will be six vehicles kind of built around this ethos heading into the next six years before like 2030 or so. So this is one of them. Of course, the sedan, the Noya Classa sedan is as well. This is kind of going to be, I think, an iX3. The sedan will be kind of an i3, I guess, a new i3, a, a sedan um, flagship vehicle. And there'll be other vehicles with other sizes, maybe a sports car, that would be super fun, although no one buys those, so maybe not. But also definitely some more SUVs. We can expect, expect probably multiple sizes of this. I hope they redo the iX, maybe the i4, maybe the i5, maybe all those will be redone with this new ethos. And honestly, I'm here for it. The design may be still a bit polarizing for some, but definitely I think the best looking vehicle I've seen from BMW since maybe the i3. Maybe that's a hot take, but I just don't love a lot of their design language and they kind of feel like they're turning things around. It's hard to describe. I've seen photos of this. Obviously, this was unveiled in Europe a few weeks ago and I didn't think much of it, but seeing it in person really did help. Now, what will be final production? We don't really know. 22 inch wheels? I don't know. Uh, PS4 S tires? Probably not. The interior? Probably not in this case, but I hope, really hope this actual UI and UX design interface, the software, I hope that's close because that feels incredible. Even though it's couldn't really do much with it, it's one of my favorite implementations in a modern car. And I'm a picky software guy, unlike Kyle who just wants to rip everything around a track. Kyle, this will probably rip around a track uh, with these PS4S tires and um, you know dual motor, maybe try and quad motor in the future. They did say this platform is built to handle four motors. We'll see if they actually do that. So that's been it. Thanks for watching another out of spec reviews video. A first glimpse at the BMW Vision Neue Klasse X. I think that's how you say it. It's a mouthful once again, but uh, yeah, hopefully I don't get copyright strikes from this music that's playing. Hopefully these mics do pretty well. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think of the design ethos. What do you think of BMW's direction? What do you think of 
everything with this car. The interior, even though it's pretty concepty, do you want to start taking bets on what will actually come to production or just enjoy what you see here? That's concepts do play a role. I know some people don't like them. Some people think they're a waste of time, but they do play a role in setting some of the tone for what is to come. So very fascinated by this car, very fascinated by all the stuff I saw at Design Works, their design studio down in Santa Monica earlier today. The fact that they're using AI with like everything, it's not all done through AI. They're just using AI as a piece of their portfolio, a piece of their mood board to determine some of the direction, the design, the materials, the colors, all those components. So there's a lot more that we'll get into with this car as we find out more information. Again, this is early days, early concept, but I'm kind of liking where it's going. And this feels less concept than some of the other concepts we've seen. We'll see more things from BMW in the future. I like the direction. Cheers.